Karen. Now, the authors you've just heard from have books already published, and those books are available for sale. And Jason, they're being sold just next door, yes? And the authors will also be signing their books if you buy them, so um, it's a good reason to do so. We'll now hear from authors who are yet to be published, but who would like to give us a little taster of uh, what you can expect. So, uh, first up, Rosaline. I think it's really nice to be included in this collection of writers, 12 Australian women science fiction writers and a, a woman publisher, so it's quite fun. And I think part of her agenda, what Elisa's agenda, was to say, yes, there are women writing short stories in Australia now. And um, I thought then, well, there's possibly a slight feminist agenda to some of this. And so I decided I would write a feminist fable. The story has several titles. A Feminist Fable is one. The Slut and the Universe is another or the relations between feminism, global warming, global financial meltdown, asteroid impact, the nuclear arms race, and the mass extinction of species. Or, how feminism got to be both the root of all evils and the means of salvation from them. So once upon a time, there will be a young girl who will live with her family in a house in the middle of the woods. Her name will be Marisa. The trees in the wood will grow clumped together, linked by strands of slime, mould, yeast, and actinomycetes. But that will by then be the way of the natural world. Life forms will change, and strange things will grow on trees that have been exposed to global warming, asteroid impact, and nuclear radiation. The mass extinction of a great many species will give room for newer and slimier forms of life to spring into existence. Marisa lives with her mother Elena and her grandmother Elisabetta, for yes, there are still families like ours, and father is off somewhere doing the work of the world. What else is new? As Marisa grows into adulthood, she wears clothes that get her mother and grandmother agitated the word slut is thrown freely around in heated discussion. Not that they mean Marisa is a slut, because no mother or grandmother really wants that word to come out of their mouths in relation to their lovely girl. But what they mean is that Marisa has chosen to dress like a slut, and therefore, when she leaves the house in the middle of the woods and goes out into the world, the people she meets along the way will treat her like a slut and take advantage. Elisabetta says Marisa looks as if she is no better than she should be and may be asking for it. Alina says she wouldn't go so far as to say that, but some people would take it that way. And why doesn't Marisa put on a nice warm coat to cover up the rags and the random bits of overexposed body, or at least wear a layer of thermals underneath? But Marisa prefers her rags. She likes taking strips of fabric and soaking them in the acid bath of a river for a few hours until random holes form and the dyes streak into stripes. She drapes the fabric around herself, clipped with pins, to show her glowing young body to best advantage. She tells Elena and Elisabetta, you're only jealous because I have it and flaunt it and you're way past it. Maurice is not showing respect, and girls who do not show respect are heading for trouble. Marisa doesn't really mean it that way either, but that's the way it comes out, and everyone retreats, deeply hurt, to their sleeping pods until the moment passes. When Marisa leaves the house in the middle of the woods, she takes care. She makes sure she has the most up-to-date asteroid app and radiation dosimeter. But that is getting ahead of the story, for I am about to say how feminism, to tell you how feminism got to be both the root of all evils and the means of salvation from them. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Rosalind, your, just a question for you. Your book, uh, the title? Oh, look, it doesn't. 
it doesn't quite have a title, uh -huh. but I have written a story called The Secret Lives of Books. And I kind of think that might be fun, but possibly not really. <laughs> okay, thank you.